This is Beering Ain't Easy. Do you spend all week thinking about what new beer you'll try next? Then yeah, this podcast is for you. Come join us while we try new beers, share our ratings, debate craft beer culture, and in the process, throw a few jabs at ourselves. So crack one if you got one, and turn it up. Welcome to Beer and Ain't Easy, episode 24, with Adam and Drew. Heck yeah, man. I am enjoying this cold weather that we've had. Got my fireplace going, you know, enjoying that cold life down here in Houston. Get that weak shit out of here. (laughs) I felt like it was appropriate for our episode today for me to talk about how cold it is in Houston. It's like a balmy 70 degrees today. (laughs) But the lows are getting in the 30s, so watch (laughs) out. (laughs) <laughs> what i think's funny about freaking fireplaces is that you think somewhere like houston that you don't need them right you, you're like okay it's hot all the time why would you need a fireplace but like the second it gets below like 55 degrees our fireplace is running in our oh house. it's it's on i swear that our fireplace runs more than our fireplace ran when i was growing up in iowa the second it gets cold, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. I still want to wear short <laughs> sleeves and shorts in my house. <laughs> I swear, anytime it's less than 60, my wife turns the fireplace on. And it's like, we'll have the air conditioning on one day. Two days later, the fireplace is on. It's yeah, there's like, no in between. There's either... no air conditioners running or the fireplace is running. So we're talking about cold weather, which it's not at all in Houston. But I think that kind of ties in. To our episode where... Where we are going to honor the great state of Iowa. Where it is cold. (laughs) (laughs) So you may remember we did an Origins episode, uh, you know, a couple episodes back. We went to Arkansas and we lived it up, lived the good life in the natural state of Arkansas. And we made fun of all the bizarre alcohol rules in Arkansas. And so now the tables have turned... We're moving north. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) When we did the Arkansas episode, we had a couple pretty amazing things happen on that episode that I'm going to challenge you to see if you can beat it. One of those is that episode is still one of our top downloads in the first week of of a podcast. So I'm challenging you. Can you bring the state of Iowa to bring them downloads? And number two, we had some pretty damn good Arkansas stouts on that episode. So my question is, is... The Iowa Stout going to stack up to the Arkansas Stout? Because I, I, I've got low expectations here. All right. So I got a, it's a two question situation. So question number one, Iowa will be superior to Arkansas. And I do recall we did have a lot of downloads from Arkansas. Unfortunately, the Arkansans <laughs> <laughs> were offended by making fun of their state and they never listen to any more episodes. That's partially true. (laughs) (laughs) And it was mainly me with my self depreciating humor. (laughs) And so question number two, will the Iowa beers beat the Arkansas beers? Absolutely. Doubtful. But I got to ask what all have we got going on in this episode? We have two very exciting themes to this episode one is we'll get to talk about how great iowa is which we've already talked about some i may have to edit some of it it may be too boring (laughs) (laughs) and two we have a really interesting experiment that we're gonna do and you know by now you know we like to conduct beer experiments freaking epic beer experiments if i may add beer experiments I'm yeah. trying to say it all as one word, and I can't. <laughs> beer spearmits? Beer spearmits. <laughs> I think we just lost the audience. So what we're going to do is we have two legendary Midwest stouts, and we are going to drink those at three different temperatures to answer the age-old question, what is the best temperature? For your beer. (laughs) I'm sure everyone is sitting there dying to know the answer. 
Don't Google this because you don't want the answer. <laughs> We're going to tell you in straight hard facts from these two scientists what that right temperature is. Stay tuned. So while we're talking about Iowa, I, like we got to talk about our pregame beer because Adam and I got into this debate about this particular beer, and that beer is King Sue by Toppling Goliath. Uh... So King Sue was it was it was like a bucket list beer because this one was. was hyped up and it's you know really well thought of. It's a double IPA hazy, and uh, we got this beer because Adam's dad came down with a freaking mega iowa beer collection it was pretty impressive yeah one thing we can conclude is that your dollar with beer in iowa goes a lot farther than it does in houston it's no lie like adam came back with the bill and i looked at it and was like oh this is kind of a lot of money and then he brought the beer over and i was like holy shit man (laughs) so much beer in my fridge is like overflowing (laughs) but toppling goliath i mean when you think about best iowa breweries this has got to be the best one in the state of Iowa. And so King Sue's probably supposed to be the best beer in Iowa. The best. Oh yeah. And so Adam drank his first and he took like a, like a seductive video at the fireplace with his King Sue and he was making love to it. I think, um, I was, and he rated it a 4.75 on untapped. I did. And I stand by my decision. And he was talking and hyping this beer up so much that I, I ran home and I got mine and I rushed over to bring an extra one to my brother-in-law. I was like, oh, dude, we got to try the King Sue. And we both were drinking it. And, and it's a really good beer. And I'm drinking it right now thinking it's still a really good beer. Yeah. But it's not an epic beer. It's, I, it's, it's no, a good I, beer. No, I think it's an epic beer. I think that you're afraid to admit what Iowa has brought to the table. I think you let your Iowa bias add 0.5 to that rating. It should have been a 4.25. No freaking <laughs> way. I will say this this beer is a month older than when I drank it. And I don't think it's quite as good. I think it's... Got to drink these bad boys fresh. Got to drink them fast. Freshies. Freshies. So I think you need to give the audience a little bit of context about your alleged great state of Iowa. So... What can you tell me about Iowa? So there are many things I could tell you about Iowa. And they are? <laughs> so I guess like as it relates to beer, I think the one thing that stands out to me about Iowa, I don't know about like the whole state of Iowa, but I remember growing up in Iowa City and going to school at the University of Iowa is people would just get so belligerently drunk. And I'm talking like (laughs) piss your pants at the bar drunk, like can't, can't walk drunk. And I always like, I always thought like in college, I just thought like everywhere was like that. And then I moved to Baton Rouge right when I graduated and we'd go to bars and I like never once saw someone like walking around the bar, like pissing their pants, can't even fucking walk or talk. It's because they can handle their liquor. (laughs) (laughs) So is it like, do you think it's, you know, people in the South can handle their liquor? Or do you think that people in Iowa drink like ungodly quantities of alcohol? I think, I think it's the latter. (laughs) In fact, I know it's the latter. (laughs) I mean, you, you got to, you got to stay warm in that freezing cold winter, you, you know, having, Six beers while you're out there tailgating ain't going to cut it. It's it's too cold. Yeah, you got to keep them coming. Keep them coming. What's funny when you say that, I had some friends in college from Iowa, good folks, and I've been to Iowa City, and it was it's a fun college town, lots of bars and stuff, but I remember a story that one of my Iowa friends was telling me about. He went to Iowa State, I think, and in college, uh, he was an RA, and somebody on his hallway was looking for the shared bathroom on the dorm floor and instead walked into another guy's <laughs> dorm room and proceeded to unzip his pants and pee all over a guy's DVD collection. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> tried to look for a place to flush and like nothing there. <laughs> I was like, what would it take to think that like someone's dorm room is a bathroom and then just like, Hey, just, I'm here. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's pretty much a routine, routine event. You know, <laughs> College town in Iowa. Oh man! So what else? I feel like we need we need more. We need to understand for those of us who don't know anything about Iowa. We need to like feel 
what you felt growing up like what what is life like in Iowa it's cold and it's like so cold growing up I would wear shorts the first time after like in the spring when it was like 35 degrees everyone would show up in shorts like kids walking to school in shorts the first day it's like 35 snows starting to melt and if someone from the south was just rolled in that day, they'd be like, what the fuck is going on out here? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I got my flannel pants on. I got a blanket on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 55 degrees. I got that fireplace going. So another thing about Iowa is there's a very interesting fact about the University of Iowa football. Okay. In my entire life, there have only been two coaches for the University of Iowa. Dang. So they don't have to pay that, like, separate coach <laughs> no. fee. <laughs> they can spend all their money on their players. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the real dirt, though? I mean... It's a clean state. I was afraid of that. And so I did my own Iowa Because <laughs> I subscribe to self-depreciating humor. And as you've seen, Adam, he's always going to take the road of making himself look better and his home state look better. Uh, whereas I'm just going to throw myself under the bus at every opportunity. It's, All right. Let's see. Let's see what you got. I got three facts about Iowa that I learned through extensive research. Okay. Number one fact. Hogs outnumber people, humans, four to one. In the state of Iowa. <laughs> They're like the world's what? leading like hog. Ha hog, ham, bacon state. <laughs> I did not know that. So did you, in high school, did you go to prom with a girl or with a hog? <laughs> Is um, both an option? <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming <laughs> Uh, you set me up. You set me up way too much on that one. <laughs> I, I didn't see that coming, but that's so awesome. That's what she said. Oh, my God. Second fact. I was looking for what are the top musical artists that have come out of the state of Iowa. Let me answer that question. Slipknot. Yeah. Hard metal. Yeah. Woo. And I mean, it was like overwhelmingly i didn't recognize anybody else in the top 10 it was slipknot or bust slipknot is legendary i couldn't tell you what they do other than just some heavy shit that's what they do <laughs> they do it quite well <laughs> it is interesting that there's no other musicians yeah what's funny when i looked at actors i didn't want to bring that up because it was actually you had like tons of actors yeah like freaking john wayne is from iowa i was like damn bring in the heat but the musical aspect, I, I don't have... We're more of a acting and actress type of state, and yeah. we, we tend to shy away. We focus... We put our energy and focus on the theater. <laughs> the theater. <laughs> and my third fact was not really one that I researched. It's just like the only thing is somebody not from Iowa that thinks about Iowa is like when it comes to politics, there's always like the Iowa caucus. And it's always like, oh, Iowa's going to determine the election and... And it's like all these independents and no one knows what the fuck they want. I'm like, so your state is known for being incredibly indecisive up until the last minute of an election. Leading our country is really the way I would describe it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're like looking for ways to like dethrone Iowa as the first state because you guys don't matter anymore. That, no, that's not true at all. I'm not sure. <laughs> Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think on that note, I think we need to do our experiment. We do. Let's get that. Let's bring out them stouts. All right. So we're back with this experiment here. And we don't have time. Our beers are warming up. So do you want to give just like, what are you seeing? Like with this experiment, what all is going on in front of you? All right. So there are six glasses of beer in front of me miscellaneous glasses because drew um messed up the setup so then there are thermometers in every glass and 
There's just a lot going on on this. We got table. lots of marker going on. We, trying to yeah, figure we out. have markers. We're trying to figure out which beer. So we have two different beers. So one of the beers is uh, from Reunion Brewery. It's one of the one of the major breweries in the Iowa City area. This beer is Imperial Banshee Bourbon Barrel Age Stout. You can just feel like the anxiety in Adam's Thanks. voice. He's like, it wants to get drinking. I, my beers are warming up in our experiment. We're doing three different temperatures here. We've got a 45 degree, a 55 degree, and a 65 degree. We're going to tell you which one of those is the top. So the second beer we have, Adam was supposed to get two Iowa Stouts, but he ended up getting one from Wisconsin. Because, well, hmm. I got three from Iowa. But they were all from the same brewery. So it was a fail. But this one looks pretty awesome, though. It's Central Waters Brewing Company, Brewer's Reserve Stout, aged in used oak bourbon barrels. So, you know, it's another bourbon bar- barrel stout battle. You know you know us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been down this road before. You know how we do. All right. So let's go for the reunion, the 40 degree. 40 degree. Or 45 or whatever. Let's see how uh, consistent our uh, grill thermometers are. What are you getting? Um, I'm actually getting closer to 50 degrees on this one. I think it's warmed <laughs> okay. up. I think I'm at 50. I have 52. But that's all right. It's still pretty cold, right? So if you think about your average fridge, you're coming in at 40 degrees. Your probably beer is probably 45 degrees. If you leave it on the counter for 10 minutes or so, you're probably getting some temperature going. So mm-hmm. Good flavor. Really good beer i'm only in the uh the 50 degree version so i, I don't want to make that call until i get a little warmer <laughs> oh I, I didn't even try the nose i feel like there's so much pressure to drink that <laughs> i can't take it us in these damn experiments <laughs> i hate it and i love it this is what makes drinking beer fun in the buzz i only have a four degree temperature delta so i'm coming in at 56 degrees for your second one yeah i'm coming in at 54 so i got a four degree (laughs) (laughs) well i think we have determined our grill thermometers are consistent so my last beer is a straight up 63 degrees so i think we're getting pretty close to 65 so i think and if we sit here long enough, we may get a 70 because we like to keep our houses warm in Houston, <laughs> as we discussed. <laughs> so just let me give the Iowa audience right now is probably wondering what the hell is going on having your house 70 degrees in the middle of winter. So what temperature do people keep their houses at in Iowa? Uh, in the about winter? 40 degrees. Are you kidding? No. They keep their house at 40 <laughs> no, degrees. Damn, dude. <laughs> I would have bought that shit. <laughs> no, I should have left it. I, I've been so focused on these temperatures that I, I haven't been fully <laughs> understanding what's going on with the beer. It's the biggest cluster episode. <laughs> <laughs> There's, we, we overextended ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking thermometer died. <laughs> I have my brewing thermometer back there if you want to pull the big, like, four-foot <laughs> I already can tell a difference, even though it's only a couple degrees between the, the first and the second beer. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm drinking I've, – I've jumped ahead to all three, and I feel like the one that's the 55 degrees right now is, like, spot on my favorite. This beer has a really good flavor, though. It's a little sweeter, and I like my bourbon barrels a little sweeter. It's not super, super boozy. I taste vanilla. I don't know. But I, I I always seek out vanilla in my bourbon barrel stouts. I guess the question is, what is your favorite temperature? So your is your final answer? My final answer is the middle one, which was fifty five, fifty six. You got maximized flavor, but it's still refreshing because it's got that it's got that cool temperature. Drinking the warmest beer, when it hits your tongue, it doesn't feel right. I'm going with you. The middle beer on. That one wins. There's one more to go. One more to go. A lot of moving pieces here. So uh... so hold on. We got to remind folks what that second beer is. It is the Brewer's Reserve Bourbon Barrel Stout from Central Waters in Wisconsin. Okay. So my cold beer, this beer is actually a little bit colder. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm coming in at 51 degrees for my cold beer. I'm right on 51 on my cold beer. Okay. And it's good, but not a lot of flavor yet. I'm thinking it needs a little temperature to warm up. This beer has a good dark fruit flavor to it. it has a good plum flavor. I feel like this one's a little bit boozier, but not not really boozy. I think this beer is good. Yeah. So I have very I have a three degree temperature difference. We tried. <laughs> I was expecting Drew to have a temperature controlled bath <laughs> set up. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised if you had that set up. There's only so much you can do while you're trying to get the kids in bed and, and taking a bath and all that. You, know? <laughs> you should have used the bath water. <laughs> you come in and I'm like, sorry, I accidentally spilled some bath water in your stout. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes a little soapy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make a prediction before I drink my last, my highest temperature beer. And I'm going to predict that because of the less sweet the more boozy flavor of this beer that my favorite is going to be the highest temperature yeah because it's more like what you would drink bourbon right off Mm -hmm. your shelf right i think you may be right Uh, on something that's a more bourbon forward boozy stout the warmer the better what room temp is is just probably fine yeah i've always wanted to try a bourbon barrel stout at pure room temperature yeah well, give your warmest, just, you know, set it aside for know, your story. But it's it's so good. I, <laughs> I need to taste it. So my welcome to the South moment was when I, I started my career in Baton Rouge. And, you know, I'd been living there a month or two and I, we were going out for lunch. And there was like a 45-year-old man who was riding in my back seat. And I had an ice scraper. For those of you who don't know what that is, it is a device that you use to scrape ice off your windshield. And so he grabs it and he goes, what's this? (laughs) And I'm just like, I'm like, what the hell? Don't get cold down here, man. Like I can't relate to that a whole lot because Arkansas, we'd at least get like one good snow a year and that was about it. Did you have an ice scraper? Oh, yeah. I did have an ice scraper because, you know, my car was always, it was never parked in the garage. It was always outside. So had an ice scraper for sure. I remember driving to school in high school, like I'd have my car parked out in the driveway and I'd have like this little patch where like the defrost would have cleared out. And so I'm like driving to school through this like (laughs) four by four inch viewing window is like so fucking dangerous. So let's take a minute while we're um, dealing with the complexity on this table right now to talk about stout beers. So talk about, do you have like a favorite type of stout beer or like, is there much differentiation for you? I love coffee stouts. I know we've done a lot of bourbon barrel stouts, which are great and they're tasty, but I feel like coffee stouts are, I like drinking them more. Really? What about pastry stouts? I like pastry stouts, but they're like so sweet. It's just, it's like almost too much. Oh, it's way too much for me. Yeah. Yeah, I like coffee stouts. They're good, but bourbon stouts, bourbon, barrel aged Russian imperial stout, that's when it's bringing the heat. You know, when I look at my ratings and I'm thinking in my head, like I love coffee, like I I jump to coffee stout because that's what I, I crave. But when I think about some of the best beers I've had, they have been bourbon barrel stouts. I don't like the super boozy bourbon on your tongue. I like the a little sweeter. For me, there is kind of like how I have a favorite type of hazy IPA, like where I see it and I smell it and I'm like, damn, that's going to be a 4.25 or higher. As soon as I smelled this Central Waters, it had this unique, strong, strong, strong bourbon smell. And it was delightful. As soon as I have that smell, like I don't even need to taste the beer. It's like, this is going to be a good beer. That's, That's story. my story and I'm sticking to it. As you should. So are you going to pick like Wisconsin over Iowa today? I mean, it it is the greater Midwestern state. Oh. <laughs> I don't know anything about Wisconsin. Oh. I just knew that I would get on your skin there. Go Badgers. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, at the beginning of this episode, I established that I rate the beer. Rate the beer, not the state. Rate the beer, not the state. And so I am going with the Central Waters. And I don't even think it's close. Really? Not even close. As soon as I smelled the two beers, I knew they weren't even they weren't even going to compete with each other. Not even in the same ballpark. So if if you're saying Central Waters is your top dog, have you formulated a rating yet? I'm going a 4.5. Okay. That's a bold move, Cotton. As soon as I smelled this beer, it had that smell, and that smell starts at a 4.5. <laughs> I'm going to flip the script on you here. I thought that the Iowa Stout whoop, whoop. reunion was better than the Central Waters. And it's all because I felt like it was a little sweeter and a little more vanilla. You know me and that vanilla. I know, I know. And I, I'd probably rate that one at a 4.25. And Central Waters, I'd actually give it a 4.0. Ooh. I am what I am. <laughs> like it or love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say to a uh, Meredith? Yeah. That's how I stay married. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me. Since I gave you a 4.25 and a 4.0, your top was a 4.5. Where does Iowa stack up on this? I'm going a 4.0. 4.0. 4.0. You docked your Iowa beer. If I was right in the state, it would be a 5.0. Best state in the world. <laughs> Real news. <laughs> you know what's funny is since you rated that a 4.0, you rated Arkansas. You had one Arkansas beer at a 4.5. I'd had too much to drink. We yeah. had too many beers. So I think what you're saying is Arkansas makes a better stout than Iowa. Well, I have not had the other Iowa stouts, and I'm sure they will be far superior. And they tried hard. They did. They didn't go as hard as those Arkansas Razorbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because they're the Razorbacks, but Iowa should have been the Iowa Razorbacks with... A hog count of four to one. Well, I think, you know what it is, is that Arkansas is a bunch of Iowa wannabes. And so they chose to name their state the Razorbacks to envy the Iowa Hawkeyes. And all their pigs. And all their pigs. And prom dates. (laughs) And prom dates. (laughs) So before we close out this episode, I got to talk a little bit about merch. We've got a merch page for you. You can get sweatshirts, t-shirts, stickers, whatever you want. You got to go to redbubble.com or you got to hit up those episode notes. So if you want to support Bearing Ain't Easy Podcast, we come here every week (laughs) ad-free. Ad-free. Adam and I were talking one day. I got to bring this up. We were listening to another podcast and they introduce their podcast oh we're gonna bring this episode to you ad free and i was like that's what i would say every episode because it's like we don't have anyone to advertise (laughs) so it's like of course i'm gonna say yeah we're ad free we're giving you some ad free podcasts we are coming to you ad free we have uh partnered with a big time merchandiser and it's now available so go get it and as long as you keep getting that merch we'll continue giving you ad free episodes all right it was a very well orchestrated experiment today experiment (laughs) i think you really tried hard to get it right this time (laughs) yeah i think i think i can go to sleep tonight knowing that I have done some good for our community of listeners, letting them know the proper temperature to drink their beer. They have benefited from this experiment. We're beer educators. We are. We're educators and and we're serving our community. And that's... Spitting knowledge. (laughs) That's how I can go home at night. See y'all next time. This has been a Bearing Ain't Easy production in Houston, Texas. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to see what we're drinking, our untapped handles are Bearing Ain't Easy Adam and Bearing Ain't Easy Drew.